How do you make a great killer shark film? You do what Jaws does. The end. Okay, no, that's not quite where I want to go with things, but honestly, it is tough to look at this without noting that, of course, the first proper killer shark monster movie nailed it right out of the gate. Jaws isn't just the best shark film, but one of the best films ever, full stop. Till Meg, of course. Okay, I kid, but I am oddly very excited for some Statham versus giant prehistoric shark action. I mean, how could you not be? It's Megalodon. He's kidding, right? A monster movie and a brilliantly stirring men on a mission character study, Jaws is pretty much flawless as a film and in its execution of the shark. Too many people have already gone into what is so good about Jaws for me to really have anything that new to say. So instead, I want to discuss more just what, for me, nowadays would make for an enjoyable enough killer shark that can stand on its own outside of Jaws' shadow. We are not wanting for bad shark flicks. After Jaws, a wave of shark exploitation took over. There, of course, had been the odd shark film here and there pre-Jaws, but after 1975, it exploded. Not many of them, if any of them were really all that good. There have been decent films that have been heavily inspired by Jaws. I'm talking Piranha, The Beast, and Tremors. But actual shark films? Mainly pretty naff. In fact, I'd say the best of them was Jaws 2, which isn't a patch on the original, but a pretty watchable film on its own. I'm not really going to count films like Sharknado and Sharktopus as they aren't particularly even trying to be good. I'm not really one for films that are try to be bad. And they often just aren't sharks. They're all weird mutations or hybrids, etc. And the only real mutation or shark-like creature I'm going to stretch to is the intelligent sharks in the Deep Blue Sea series. Deep Blue Sea. Now there is a shark film. Unlike Jaws, which elevated B-movie plot into high drama, this is a film fully leaning into its B-grade thrills. With a budget that films like this rarely get, and the assured hand of Die Hard 2 director Rennie Harlan, this gets it mostly right. Whereas Jaws had to be creative about hiding its killer creature, which of course worked brilliantly in that film, Harlan isn't held by the same restrictions. He revels in these creatures, which are brought to life through excellent practical work and some surprisingly solid CG. What Harlan does well here is surprise. These are creatures far more adept at navigating the ocean than we are, and move incredibly fast in water. Many even attack by coming so quickly that upon hitting their prey, they leave it stunned, making the kill easier. It is the dread of not knowing where a shark will come from and when that makes them work. It is something that Spielberg played with brilliantly, teaching us that he would show when Bruce was on his way only to then later shock us with a surprise experience that we just didn't expect. Okay, this bit is still ridiculous and sadly pretty poorly animated, but it does work pretty well when you don't expect it. Am I saying Deep Blue Sea is a classic? God no. It's definitely a cheese fest and an average film, but when it comes to shark flicks, you make do with what you've got, and this one, for the most part, works. Don't bother with the sequel, though. Other than a few decent kills, it is your substandard director video sequel done on the cheap. Post the original Deep Blue Sea, the most immediately effective effort was probably Open Water, which went back to the Jaws unseen menace way of doing things, but took it even further. This is about intensity, and where possible, realism. It's about as far from Deep Blue Sea as you can get, and for the most part, it works. The sharks are more a ticking time bomb than anything. You know they are probably going to get their mark, but when? The unseen darkness, the idea death could come from any direction at any time, the constant raising of stakes with fatigue and increasingly bloody wounds in the water. The filmmakers understood how the menace could be effective on a very low budget. That's right. That's right. The interesting thing to discuss now, then, is how do you showcase your shark? Practically? Digitally? The real thing? All are decent options, but none are really fully effective. Okay. Me, I will always find the first Jaws 
to have the most effective shark, then it's practical, but I'm always going to go for practical over CGI when I can. There is something about how it's seen beneath water. It's unnatural movement. It's still unnerving to this day. A big part of that too is the score. That increasing intensity, it builds and builds to a violent climax and represents the shark itself, even when it's not on screen. Sharks don't make a noise, at least not to us, but the feeling of an increasing heartbeat gives it an audio presence that is incredibly unsettling. Combine that with the impactful attack, and it works beautifully. Actually, according to some filmmakers, sharks can make a sound. From the angry babies of Deep Blue Sea 2 to a full-on roar in Jaws the Revenge. Don't do that. It's dumb. Find a better way to make them menacing. Is the shark in Jaws a realistic shark? No. In fact, they rarely are in films anyway, at least personality-wise. It's of course common knowledge that generally most sharks don't have a great interest in killing humans. And this list isn't about what makes a great shark, it's what makes a great killer shark. It's the cinematic monster of a shark that we are talking. The shark as a monster plays up to our fear of the deep, of the unknown, as much as the creature itself. Sharks are arguably the nearest thing in reality we have to a sea monster, and films build on that human idea of them more than the real thing. The way they move and interact is important to see, but really it's what we don't see that works as much as what we do. It's as much about the use of the sea around them, the environment they're in. Open water, of course, is about that unending expanse of ocean and what it could hold. Deep Blue Sea brings these beasts into tight confines, playing up to the idea that they could be around any corner and thus easily trap you in place. You can see that too in the average Bait 3D, which has a tsunami wash great whites into a supermarket. I didn't like that movie, but it did sort of remind me of that amazing bit in the first Resident Evil, which back then was incredibly tense. Recently, The Shallows and to a lesser effective point, 47 meters down, have played with this idea well. Through a solid combination of claustrophobic environment, that sense of safety being just a little too far, and of course, intermittent flashes of the creature increasing in how much is revealed each time. Dread builds and builds. It's really about survival, and just how the hell they will get out the situation that keeps you tense. Effective most in the shallows, through both What Happens and Blake Lively's excellent performance. Also, as CG sharks go, this is about the best yet. They nailed the look and movement and how much we see of it. You get a sense the camera can barely keep up with or contain the menace, putting us at unease, as it could be behind or below us as well as the characters. The shark should be more adept at moving in water than a cameraman, so to keep it perfectly in frame just makes it feel both fake and less dangerous. There are elements of a lot of shark films that work, and a lot that don't. I haven't mentioned a great number of the other films, as really it's difficult to find many that work better than the few I focused on, even if they have their moments. I mean, look at how the Jaws series went. And the less said about the Shark Attack franchise, the better. Shark Knight and Bait both had some fantastic practical work, but little else. What makes a good killer shark? It is about the sense of unease, about balancing showing what the menace can do against not showing too much of it too quickly. That doesn't mean you have to keep it hidden, but keeping it uncontainable, matching what we know of the beast to that of the characters for the most part. But of course, it's also about the prey. You have to care about them. Again, the reason Jaws works so well is that you like these guys, something that also works in the other effective killer shark films. You have to take characters you like and put them in a situation that feels dire, one you actually care about them getting out of. The shark represents the unknown, whilst also being an image of impending doom. Those depths will get you, in the form of a prehistoric perfect predator, designed for three simple things. Swim, and eat, and make little sharks, and that's all. Meg looks silly, but it still taps into a primal fear I certainly have of the unknown. 
we will always have a respect for these creatures, and often that respect will manifest itself as fear. Filmmakers who understand what it is humans fear about their surroundings, about both claustrophobia and that fear of the unknown, will have the knowledge they need to create an effective, cinematic, killer shark. Just stop ending the films like this.